going on you guys, Uncle Jess here. This is the Piopoli Moy SLA Resin 3D Printer and I'm gonna be giving you guys a full review and my thoughts on this printer. Let's check it out. guys, so I've had this printer on hand for about two months now, I believe, and I've printed a variety of different things on it, and really excited to be talking with you about it. The folks over at MatterHackers.com sent this to me to review and use in some of my build videos, and so far, I have been absolutely loving this printer. This is a resin-based 3D printer. What that means is it's going to use lasers on the underside of the printer, and it's going to use the liquid resin that's inside the vat here and the bed is gonna down into the resin and it's gonna pew, 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 onto the, uh, the build platform there. Is that technical enough for a review? I don't know. By the way, I took the, uh, the both the left and the right and the top panel off of the printer just so I could get more light into the machine here for you guys for this video for recording. Normally there is a UV panel here on the top and on the sides are acrylic panels there to help block out the, any sunlight coming in to help you know, slow down any of the curing that you might have on the resin that's in there in the vat when you're not printing and all that crazy stuff. So there's two versions of this printer available. Uh, the same same exact printer, just the cost is different. One is a kit for $1,300, and the other is a fully assembled printer for $1,700. I would really recommend the kit over the fully assembled, save yourself some money, and use that towards some of the resin material. The resin can range anywhere in price from, I think, 50 up to for the Piopoli specific resin that you can use that I have been using, it's about 80 to 85 dollars for a uh, a one liter bottle of that resin. And I have a printer going behind me, which I should have paused maybe for this video. There are a variety of different colored resins that you can print with, and this printer works really well with a lot of other different brands of resins. There is a great spreadsheet online, a Google Doc that people are actively contributing to with their different settings that they can use to operate with those different resin materials. Enough of me talking about all this stuff. I know you guys wanna hear what I think about the prints and what are the print quality on this thing because these bad boys are supposed to print at a really crazy resolution compared to a regular standard 3D printer like on the CR10 or any of the other 3D printers that you guys are typically used to seeing me print with. So the first thing that you're probably gonna print with this is their test file, which is actually a MOI. And these came out awesome. Uh, I don't remember how long they took to print, but they came out really, really good. A, a lot of these prints are gonna be hollow and are gonna have holes in them as well. It's typically what's recommended. It saves you on resin material, and also there it has something to do with the suction action going on with the printing and the bed lifting and going back into the vat as it prints and lays down layer lines. So typically you'll see holes that people have applied into files or that you'll want to apply to your files as well. I should also mention that Practical Printing, Chris over Practical Printing, has the most amazing build video that I followed that is so step-by-step -step and simple for you to assemble this printer. It's like amazing and even Piopoli recommends you watching that and links to it in their online build documentation. So bravo to him, man. It's friggin' amazing. It was such a huge help in assembling this printer. So I printed a bunch of different things. So everything from this uh, cool little castle that you've seen online a million times, the name of it, I don't remember the name of the file ever. Who created it, I apologize. I'll have a link down below in the description for this file though. This was the one that I think that I printed that really blew me away. Uh, I'm gonna try and get close-ups of these. What's crazy to me is the detail is so fine on the prints that I have a hard time even capturing the detail on my DSLR with the, you know, the decent lenses that I have as options. I mean, it just is ridiculously nice. So one thing that I was really interested in seeing is what can I do from a cosplay perspective on a build plate of this size? The build volume of the printer is 130 by 130 by 180 millimeters, which from an SLA standpoint is actually pretty good. Um, I believe the Form 2 might be slightly bigger. The Anycubic Photon is definitely smaller in, uh, in, in bed print volume than this here. Um, but what I was able to do is take a Colonius 
eye mask here, sort of one of these Batman Red Hood masks, and print this. Unfortunately, I dropped it just the other day and snapped this. So the resin material can be a little brittle after printing. This is, would be really ideal for um, mold making. This is what I was planning on doing and I never got around to it. But the detail, again, just came out super nice. It's crazy smooth on this print. This was without me doing any post-processing, sanding, or anything like that on the print. Uh, one thing that a lot of people are doing with this printer is printing these little D&D action figures or figurines for their gameplay experiences. Anything character, statue related, these machines are absolutely perfect for. And it, again, just the detail that this thing picks up is ridiculous. Uh, I've actually been doing a few different prints around different statues. I'm not gonna show you guys the full thing since I am working on some videos around those, but you'll get the idea of what I'm printing. So here is a, a, just a comparison of a Black Panther arm that was printed on the CR-10 as well as printed on the Piopoli Moy. The, the one that was on the CR-10 came out really nice, but the detail that's just coming through on the Moy is unbelievable, just absolutely unbelievable. The same thing goes here for this Black Panther head. Uh, this is a little bit larger in scale, but you can really see the details and you can really see some of the issues on a typical FDM 3D printer. And again, I think this still looks good, but the details on the, the Moy are just ridiculously nice. If you're into, you know, statues or making action figures, this is the way to go for right now. This is just ridiculous. I did find from Altered Carbon the stacks the that you could print off of Thingiverse. This is actually a file that I printed on the Moy and then finished here with my airbrush and some Alcad uh, silver paint. And I think this just came out phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. And then here is Sutor's, Sutor, Sutor, I don't know how to pronounce his name from, <laughs> Thor Ragnarok, his skull that I printed on the Moy and then painted and finished. Again, this was using uh, the silver alclad as a base here. And then I just used a whole bunch of acrylic paints, a variety of different acrylic paints from brown to green to red to really weather this out. And I think this just looks absolutely stunning. So where is it, this crown? This is my crown, the source of my power. Oh, that's a crown. I thought it was a big eyebrow. So the creme de la creme for me is actually this punk fill that the folks over at Piopoli had made for, I think it was uh, West Coast Bay Area Maker Fair or something like that. Um, this is Matter Hacker's, you know, signature file here, and they've added a whole bunch of spikes and details to it. So I've printed this uh, really super tiny and then uh, small-ish. I think this is about three inches tall, two and a half, three inches tall. And again, the details just came out absolutely perfect on it. I did finish this as well. So finishing a print really is basically all around. You can take some 200 grit sandpaper and smooth out any of the nubs where supports were on this and then basically apply some, some really light primer to it and then basically ready to go. You can easily see if there's any additional areas that need further sanding, but you really don't have to apply much pressure. These sand super, super smooth. All right, so let me break down pros and cons of this printer. So Pro is, I, I absolutely love that it comes in a kit form. It saves you some money. Again, compared to the Form 2, this probably costs about half as much as the Form 2. I've not used the Form 2, but I can't imagine the details being any much better or any better than the Moy can actually produce. And it's just, I'm blown away at the quality of prints that I'm getting out of this machine. The leveling process as well, basically once you get this thing leveled, you don't really have to re-level unless you put in a brand new vat. If you're wanting to swap them out with another vat, then you'll probably want to re-level slightly. Uh, but again, it's just basically turning a few knobs very, very precisely. <laughs> but the, the leveling process is pretty straightforward and easy. And what's great is once it's level, it's basically level. Uh, again, this thing, the other a big pro is that it works with a variety of different 
resins and there is a again I mentioned a huge spreadsheet online I'll link to that as well to where you can find out what all the different settings are for that so if you're looking to save some money on different resins then you can pick those up and use directly with this machine as people are testing it and trying it out this printer also has a amazing online community I just recently did a video about the strengths of making sure that you want to have a printer that you're buying that has a really good community behind it and this has a really good community. There is a really good Facebook group for this, as well as they have their own forum online that is extremely active, and they're extremely active on the Peopoli side, answering everybody's questions. There is a ton of stuff on there in terms of uh, setting up issues, if you've run into anything, questions on printing details, orienting things, um, how to run this on a Mac versus a PC, what software do you use to manage your supports for building those. It's just, it's really, really good and it's really nice to see that they have this really great community online to support this machine. And just to reiterate, uh, again, uh, the print quality and the build volume is really good for a resin SLA 3D printer as of today in 2018. Pain points of this printer. Um, the biggest, absolute biggest pain point for me is the workflow for getting a print ready to print on this machine. It is, to me, a bit of a pain in the ass. So what you're gonna do is you get your file from online, maybe it's Thingiverse, My Mini Factory, whatever it may be. You're then gonna take that into Mesh Mixer where you're gonna reorient, you're going to repair the file, you're going to hollow out the file, you're gonna apply holes to the file. Just that alone is just extra steps, but I, you know what? Honestly, that's gonna happen regardless if you're using this. SLA printer or the form or the Anycubic Photon or whatever other machines out there uh, that you're going to be printing with, that's still going to be the process. You have to, you know, you don't have to hollow out the file, you don't have to reorient it, but it just, it, it helps if you want to save some of the materials because the materials are still a little expensive and that's the second point. I, was, I forgot to finish my first point. So again, once you're finishing with the hollowing and making holes, you're going to export that as an STL out of mix, Mesh Mixer, and then you're going to want to load it into another software to generate supports. So there are a variety of different software applications out there that you can generate supports for this particular printer. And that's one of the biggest pain points to me is that I, they, they, they don't have a dedicated software for this that's an all-in-one. It sounds like they might be working on that. Again, it's not a huge thing. It is for me just because it's time consuming. So I have to take this from Mesh Mixer into another software. Then I generate the supports for this, <clears throat> which depending on what software you use could take a very long time and how complex the file is. And then I'm gonna export that out of that software. And then I'm gonna load it into Cura, the Moi edition for Cura, which by the way, if you're on a Mac, you have to, every time you load up the software, load in some sort of special processing code or else it's not gonna print correctly. And if you forget, guess what? Your print's not gonna work and you're gonna have to peel that thing off of the, the bed of the printer. Uh, it's just a pain. So hopefully, you know, this is simplified. I know some of the other software printers out there have an all-in-one <clears throat> where they have uh, their own software that will generate the supports and actually generate the G-code that will go onto the print to actually print the, the file for you. So it's, it's reducing that step a bit. Uh, honestly, I, since I'm a Mac user, that, that last step is super annoying, especially every time that I open up the Cura Moi edition that I have to add that in there. But it, it, it's a small price to pay to get some Stunning, absolutely stunning prints. So the remaining part of the workflow, this is a huge ongoing workflow discussion here, by the way, for these printers. Uh, again, typically with any of these SLA printers, what you're gonna run into is after the print's done, you need to dip it in isopropanol alcohol, so IPA, uh, and let that sit in there for, yeah, I don't know, however many minutes you wanna do, five minutes, 10 minutes, some people think 15 minutes, I leave it there for like 30 seconds, and then dump it in water, and then bring it back in there and do back and forth like three or four to five times. And then after it's thoroughly cleaned up and you've got most of the, the, the loose resin off of there, you have to cure the prints. So you either need to stick it in the sun or you need to create some sort of a UV light source to cure your print. So all of this is just, it, it's, it's, it's a different 
process than your typical 3D printing. And that's not a bad thing. It's just something, if you come from the standard 3D printing world, it's a different thing to wrap your head around, a whole different process. And But once you get it, it's really straightforward and, and pretty simple. And again, this is the quality of the prints that you're gonna get off of one of these machines is stupidly nice. It's just stupidly nice. There's like hands down nothing better than this. And I hope to God, like this is the future of 3D printing. Uh, maybe with some of those, the, the, the steps there, the workflow steps cut down. Even I couldn't even remember them all. So I have to mention one last thing before I wrap this up is Piopoli also announced that they are working on a 300 by 300, I think it was 300, uh, version of this printer so that you can print really large prints with it. That is insanely exciting. I could print a helmet or at least a helmet in multiple pieces on that printer. Uh, you could probably print a helmet on this, but you'd have to chop it up and then slice it together and all that fun stuff. Uh, I, you know, I want to print a, a helmet, crazy high detail. I will glad if it if I can get away with paying, let's say, 60 bucks for one bottle of resin and that one bottle of resin prints one helmet. I might be down for that, especially if the quality of the print is crazy high detail and I don't have to spend so much time sanding and filing and all that crazy stuff so that I can just basically get it painted and wear it. That would be like the ultimate in 3D printing for cosplay for me. So again, for anybody that's interested in this printer, you know, it's really there for folks that are doing small models. Maybe you're doing jewelry, maybe you're doing characters, maybe you're doing action figures, prototyping those things. Maybe you wanna do small parts for mold making. This is, you're not gonna get any better than this in my opinion. Uh, there are some issues, but nothing with the actual printer itself. Uh, there is a one button click control I should have mentioned with this. I would love to see some sort of touch interface. I get a little stuck on this and I have to pull the knob out a little bit. This is just a little bit to, to, to get used to. But all in all, it's a solid, solid machine. I would highly recommend it. If you're in the market for an SLA 3D printer, definitely check out the kit. I will have links down below to this as well that help out the channel if you're interested in picking one of these up. I just want to say thanks again for guys. <clears throat> My voice is going for some other reason. I don't know what's going on. I might be getting a little sick, so apologies about that. I just want to say thanks again for watching, you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video, and I will see y'all next time. Bye.